hello. Uh, this is a quick video. It's actually responding to a, a question that someone asked on one of my other videos. Um, they'd bought a second-hand laptop and wondered what to do with it. So, um, if you bought yourself a second-hand laptop, <laughs> then uh, this video is all about what you do when you get it and what checks you do and things like that. And hopefully you'll find it helpful. <laughs> and um, right, let's get on with it. Right, so it's arrived and you've taken out the box. Having checked the box for any signs of any obvious steppings or crushings or damage, uh, if you do notice any damage on the box and it looks serious, then uh, you are entitled to reject with delivery. Um, but okay, let, let's just assume that it's arrived in one piece and you've got it out of the box. Now, you should have the mains lead and the charger and the device itself. Now, this is a Dell uh, 5285 all in one sort of tablet thing that uses like a clover for its power supply and notice that the power supply itself says Dell on it and that matches the Dell there so just check to make sure that you've got the, the actual device itself obviously the power supply and its mains lead and make sure that if you've got a branded computer which you will have that that matches the power supply now this particular model um, is supposed to have a, um, I think it's a 65 watt power supply and that's exactly what, what's come with it. So that all matches up. Whilst we're talking about mains leads, when you unravel it, the length is actually a good indication of how old it is. Um, this one is absolutely uh, colossal. It's got to be about four, be four meters or something. So if you get a laptop that's got a, a mains adapter with a really long lead, then that would suggest that it's quite an old one. So the next thing you do is this. Um, I'm going to unclip the mic and just hold it against this laptop. This is a, a, an old Samsung, but it illustrates what um, you should be checking. There's the mic on there, and I'll just pick up the laptop, and I'm just going to rotate it. And that noise that you can hear, that sort of tinkling noise, is the little bits of plastic that are broken off inside. So it's got some... Sorry, pronounce it, but you can't see what I'm doing, but... That is, yeah, I'll clip the mic back on. So that, that, those sort of tinkling noises, that's um, little bits of plastic which shows it's got some internal damage. Now for laptops, that's normally something to do with the hinges because the, the, there's metal hinges that are screwed into the, the shell, the outer shell. And they've got a screw and a brass thing that the screw goes into. And that brass thing, I'm sure it's got a name, but that brass thing has got like teeth on the outside of it with like a, a hole in the middle. And when they mould the plastic case, they put little risy up bits with holes in and then they push these brass bits in and that's what it screws into. And these bits here, I mean, it's probably this bits here is a bit loose, look. That's a bit, that one there is a bit more loose. It's looser than the other one. So what happens is that as the laptop gets older, the hinges sort of seize up and more force is required to open the lid. So the little bits of, of plastic that surround it break. And that's what's, that's what's falling off in here. So if you get that, send it back. I'm sticking with the same laptop for the next bit. Uh, if you can take the battery out, then just take it out and just flip it over and have a look at it and see if it matches the branding of the main device. So this is a Samsung battery in a Samsung laptop. So this is probably the original battery. If you get one that has no uh, branding on it, then it's probably going to be a replacement one. Um, so just check it, this is if you can take the battery out because a lot of the time you can't take the battery out. But if you can just check that it matches and if it doesn't, Mm, make a note of that 
So for the next thing, I'm going to do is this old um, Asus EPC. Um, this is an Intel Atom for Windows 7. And uh, essentially, you do a visual inspection around the outside. And on this one, there is a crack on the clamshell. Which is fairly obvious when you, when you... If you just grab it and open it, you might not notice it. But it's very much, you know... It's, you can see it quite clearly that there's damage to that. Now this ref this really references um, what you've bought. If you've bought um, a refurbished laptop, then there will normally be some grading system like A, B, C, D, E and that kind of thing. And if you've bought like a, a grade A one or an A star, then something like that probably shouldn't be there. That's a, that's a physical damage to the clamshell. So if uh, if if when you buy your laptop it's graded in a certain way um, expect it should be accurate is what I'm saying really so check to make sure that if you bought a C grade it looks like a C grade which will be obvious and if you are buying something that's meant to be brand new or meant to be A grade or whatever then obviously it shouldn't have that kind of damage to it so just be aware of what you've bought and what it said it was and then see if you get what you expect i think is the long and the short of it i'm going to use this acer spy one for this next bit it's part of the same thing it's the external visual assessment so what we're looking at now are the ports and you can see on this usb port here there's a black sort of tongue in the middle of it make sure that's present on all the ports otherwise you're going to get contacts that are just loose and likely to get crushed in and short the thing out so just check the usb ports for any obvious signs of damage you can get just get a nail or something just to see if that's attached if you really wanted to but visually it's that looks fine doesn't it you see another thing that you might not have got which isn't a deal breaker but it is nonetheless you might find it annoying is the little blanking plate for the card reader because they would have come with a blanking plate so chances are that's got lost because they're a bit fiddly to get back in usually and they tend to just you know they get lost next thing you look for is the certificate of authenticity now this varies between models and you can see on this one uh, this one's actually not readable at all um, you can just about make out the product key but you can't actually read it very well and this is Windows 7 Home Premium this one um, this one is Windows XP and is um, extremely readable so the Certificate of Authenticity COA should be on any machine with Windows 7 um, and older um, with the license key, it's part of the Microsoft license agreement. Um, modern machines that have Windows 10 on and Windows um, 8, they have something slightly different. So I'll show you on this Dell what they have. I'll just pop the thing out. They will have a holographic sticker like that. To say that it's got windows on it this doesn't necessarily mean that the license key will be embedded in the bios for example for this one this was a business one so it has no license key embedded in the bios at least windows 10 couldn't find it windows 11 couldn't find it either so um yeah that's a different thing altogether so there's, there's some complications there so i'm going to use a uh, this toshiba satellite for this next bit uh, we're looking at the hinges on the screen so open it up and just give it a wobble and see what the hinges are like these ones are quite stiff and there's quite a lot of play you can see there's quite a lot of play in there how, how it moves quite a long way on the previous one with the rattles it was obvious that there was a problem with the hinges but you still need to just open it fully without too much force and then just see what the hinges are like see if they're stiff see if they're if there's, a bit, if there's too much wobble in them the hinges get seized up over the years so if it's a really old laptop like this is then um, that could be an issue you can use this Samsung it's quite an ancient one uh, the keyboard just check to make sure all the keys are there and then just 
give them a gentle tap. Run your fingers over them to see if any of them have, 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 have damaged. They have quite elaborate mechanisms. A bit like deck chairs a lot of the time. So you just make sure that the, all the keys are seated correctly and that none of them are loose or you know, obviously missing. You can do a similar thing with the touchpad area as well. If you've actually got physical buttons, it's a good idea just to just to just press the buttons just to make sure that the, the plastic bit is attached because continuous pressing over the years can fatigue the, the button mechanism, not the actual button itself because that's on the circuit board underneath, but the actual mechanism that means this little plastic bit here might have snapped off. I do have a video of that, of an older one where that's happened and you, you can repair it, but just to, make, just to check. The touchpad you can't really check, but you can actually hold it up and you can see that there's a really shiny bit in the middle so you've got this wear on it and that's to be you know if you if the laptop is like six years old or something like that then of course it's going the touchpad's going to be worn so what you're looking for is a level of of sort of wear and tear that's accurate to the way it was sold to you really so if it was sold as a grade and you've got that sort of wear on it that probably I wouldn't say that was a grade would you I don't know so check check to see what what the the company you bought it from define as a grade and what they define as b grade because they aren't necessarily you know <laughs> they might not agree with what you think a grade and b grade is um yeah and whilst from the subject of keyboards make sure that the keyboard that's there is the one that's the correct key map for where you are this one here this is actually an american key map That's better. That's now a UK key map. We're back with the Aspire. Uh, we're ready to turn it on now. So you connect the mains up. And then what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to press the power button and start the stopwatch at the same time. Just so that we get an idea of how long it would take to start up. And I'll do that now. That's it powering up. Now, depending on what you've bought, will depend on what happens now. Um, if you bought a refurbished one, and they've called it refurbished, then normally Windows will have been installed. Um, but there are a few things that we'll check once that's done. So at the moment, this is booting up. Now, this is actually Windows 10, and it's running on this machine here, which, as I say, is, <laughs> is designed for Windows XP. So this is a very old machine. Um, so Windows 10 actually runs on quite a lot of, of devices. As long as it's got more than two cores and two gig RAM or more, preferably four, um, you can actually get it to work. Um, putting an SSD in would be nice. This is a mechanical hard drive, so it's taking quite a long time. Um, we're at 52, 53 seconds at the moment. So yes, Windows 10 is gonna be a bit sluggish on a device of this age, obviously. Uh, but there it is. So there's the desktop. Now, that's so far so good. Um, <laughs> next stage is uh, is really to find out exactly what, when they say refurbish, exactly what they mean by that. So with this particular one, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to move it a bit closer. That took about a minute and 20 seconds, by the way. So we'll just cancel that and get that out of the way. And I'll move it in closer so you can see the screen. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but uh, anyway, I'll talk you through it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click on the start button and I'm going to do device manager. And we'll see exactly what devices are there and what they have and haven't done when they refurbed it in inverted commas. So uh, what you can see from here, at least I can see it, is that there are no unknown devices and there are no devices that are causing problems um, so there's no errors in device manager you might have errors in your device manager but this one doesn't uh, one thing I'm going to pay close attention to while we're in here is sound video and game controllers that says high definition audio device on there that's the default Windows driver that won't match the hardware so although they put Windows 10 on here 
and it's updated the drivers for device manager it's it has they haven't done that good a job because it's only got high definition audio device it's not a specific real tech or whatever chips in there so that's something to watch out for so provided device manager doesn't show up anything too alarming the next thing we're going to do is see what version of windows they've put on and to do that you open the search box and type in winver and then press en enter and that should run the windows version command and there it is this says it's got version 20 h2 which is an older version uh, so if we then um, I've already connected it to the Wi-Fi, so if we then run Windows Update, we will then uh, get it fully updated. Now, notice we've we've done that with um, we've looked at Device Manager, but then we haven't then immediately started faffing about with it and trying to you know if there were problems in there, we haven't gone and you know tried to solve them. We've looked at Device Manager for anything obvious, and we've then gone straight to Windows Update. So, uh, what you might find is that although it doesn't identify drivers and things might have messed up because of the version they put on just for testing, well, after you've run Windows Update, you might find that Device Manager sorts itself out anyway. So we're not going to be too worried about Device Manager yet. The exceptions to that are things like touch screens mainly. Uh, so we'll get this one fully updated. So run Windows Update, get it updated. You also notice that there are optional updates as well, which are drivers. So if you do have in Device Manager drivers that are missing, then you can look in the optional bit and install everything in there and that will normally pick it up. So if I go to, um, uh, well, I've got to wait for it to find the updates, haven't I? It's found quite a lot of updates, you know, obviously, because it's going to do that, isn't it? <laughs> so we've got quite a few updates. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Uh, there's a cumulative update as well. And you just let it do that. So just let it find the updates and install them all. And that will take a while. I guarantee that will take quite a while. Because even though you've just bought it, it might have been refurbed three months ago six months ago maybe longer so there's going to be updates so just let it update so while it is updating or you know when it first turns on you can obviously check the screen for anything obvious like on this one for example there's a sort of thumb size splodge where someone has obviously picked it up from the corner so that screen's obviously got some physical damage in it and while it's turned on if you wriggle the screen if you notice any flickering or anything like that, that can be a problem too. So there's a good opportunity to check for obvious screen damage that isn't apparent when you first get it out of the box. So uh, the final section really of, of what to do when you get your, your new second hand laptop is um, we're gonna look at the battery. Um, the older the device is, the more likely the battery is, um, more likely the battery is deteriorated. So uh, the way you do that is very simple. Uh, you don't need any special software. Uh, there is a program called Battery Mon that you can use to see um, what's happening with the battery, but that's you know that doesn't matter. What we're after really is the status of it. So I'm going to just going to launch a command prompt or a terminal with admin rights like this, and I'm going to type the following command in: power cfg, and I'm going to do a forward slash, and I'm going to do battery report dink and press enter and that uh, generates a report and I'm going to be sneaky now and I'm going to use the cursor there to highlight that text pressing and hold the mouse button and moving the trackpad then I'm going to control C it to copy it and then I'm going to open edge up because that comes with it and I'm going to just Control V into there, and there's the battery report. And that will tell us who made the battery, it'll tell us um, various bits of information. Um, but the bit we're after, I'll just I'm using this this because it's the Dell, the Dell um, 5285, because it's got a touch screen, so I can go in and I can zoom in on the bit that we're after, and that's this bit here. 
So you can see the original design capacity of the battery was 42 uh, milliwatt hours. At the moment, it's able to do 21 milliwatt hours. So it's about half the capacity of it was, you know, of what it was when it was originally bought. So um, I'm going to replace the battery in this because um, that's going to seriously dent how long the, it, <laughs> it lasts without plugging into the mains. Now, if you bought the second-hand laptop because it was cheap and because you've got no plans to use it as a portable device, then this doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the, what the battery is like. But I'm just saying that it's one thing that you should check. Right, so um, that probably covers it. Um, I can't do a video for your particular second-hand laptop what I'm looking at here in this video is what I tend to do whenever I come across a laptop. Um, either if I buy one, I don't actually deal in secondhand stuff. Uh, there's, it's, it's just it has no, no real appeal to me. I'm not a, you know, I'm not, a, I don't, <laughs> I'm not a car boot salesman, and I, and I've no, no ambitions to to get masses of stock and become a reseller for secondhand goods. I've, I've no desire to do that. So, um, but I did a lot of the principles I've. I've I've um, explained in this video, I do when customers bring their laptops in for me to, you know, repair them because Windows is broken or because of whatever. Um, partly it's to cover my own back so that if I notice that a USB socket is broken, I'll tell them before they leave um, so they don't think it's me that's broken it. So a lot, a lot of it's to do with, with that. Um, also, the customer might not be aware that the battery that's in it isn't an original battery. All these kind of things, they're, they're all things that I will point out if I notice them. Uh, so when you're buying your second-hand laptop, the important thing to remember is, in a sentence really, is you get what you pay for and you should check. So if you paid a certain amount of money for a laptop with a certain spec that's been graded at a certain, in, you know, as, as a certain condition, then you should check that that, that's, that works, that that's accurate. Um, so if you're expecting a, a C-grade laptop to be in pristine condition, then you're badly wrong. That's not going to happen. But an A-grade laptop with a cracked screen is not an A-grade laptop, is it? So wherever you buy it from, they will have um, a grading system. And if it's sold as a grade A, then it should match. The the main thing that will get caught out is if you have a dealing with a company that gets through a lot of laptops because they are you know they are a reseller of them, then they will tend to put Windows on and then just leave it just for testing purposes. So the, the, the level of, 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 you know, what is meant by refurbished, that does vary from company to company. And I did point out in this video that what often gets picked up on is um, the audio driver. Um, Windows will install like a default HD audio driver, when in fact it's a Realtek chip or something like that. Uh, the Realtek ones don't get automatically detected. So you could find that when you're expertly refurbished laptop arrives that it has got HD audio and not the proper Realtek drivers. That's very, very common. Another thing is, is the internal battery. That's, it's very unlikely that that will have been tested. They may have, have, have you know, just had it powered up, but you can see that there's time involved with exhaustively testing these sort of, these sort of, you know, these, these components and, and they don't bother doing it. So uh, running that battery report is quite useful to see exactly what state the battery is in. And if you are going to run it on mains, and that's, it doesn't matter, does it? But if you, are, if you do intend to use it as a laptop that's portable, then finding out that the battery's got half the capacity it originally had is not necessarily good news, is it? So, um, yeah, hopefully these things are, are going to help you uh, when you get yours. Do you need to reinstall Windows? Well, you can if you want. Um, if, if, generally speaking, if the machine works and you can do what you want on it, it doesn't matter that the device manager has got bits missing from it. It doesn't matter that that, um, that Windows isn't necessarily 100% because it just works and you can spend time working it all out or not bother. It's up to you. Um, I will tend to bother with it because, you know, when, when people get their machines repaired, I tend to do a bit of a thorough job about it. But if, it's, if you're just buying it for personal use and it works, it doesn't really matter, does it? So, um, any questions, um, stick them in the comments. Um, if you think um, this has helped you, then um, buy me a coffee, that would be nice. Um, and um, thanks for watching.